10 News begins right now with breaking news. Stuff like this happens. It, it's scary. A student shot, community on edge, and police searching for a suspect. Now, all of this happening at the Berglund Center in Roanoke, outside of graduation practice for William Fleming High School. Tonight, we have live team coverage and reaction from parents and city leaders. And getting right to that breaking news tonight, we've learned that this is an isolated incident that all started with a fight. But more than 300 students were around when the shooting happened. 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer actually heard those gunshots go off from here at the station. And he is live at the Berglund Center right now. So, Shane, what have you learned? Well, Lindsay and John, police and school leaders say the most important thing tonight is this, that the student body at large is safe and that there is no ongoing threat to the community. As you said, we were actually outside of the station when we heard the series of shots go off. We looked across our parking lot here to the steps of the Berglund Center, and that is when from across the road, about 200 yards away, we saw people running away from this area, and then that's when we came over here. We were on scene right around the time that police arrived, and when they arrived, they came right after the shooting happened. They were here and say that the victim is a student and was taken to the hospital for non life threatening injuries. As I said, it happened outside of the Berglund Center in the parking lot and the steps while the event was going on inside. Police did recover a black handgun laying at the top of the steps. It's still early in the investigation. While they couldn't go into much detail, this is what Police Chief Sam Roman says happened. Earlier today, uh, there was a altercation between two juvenile uh, uh, individuals. Uh, that was uh, somewhat resolved, uh, but later on, uh, two individuals again became involved in an argument which ended in gunfire. Now, witnesses that were here in the parking lot tell us they saw the suspect speed away here from the parking lot in a car. Police tonight not saying anything about the suspect. I also spoke with Mayor Sherman Lee. He came out here to the scene, was briefed with police, and was taking it all in for himself. John, I'll have our conversation coming up tonight, tonight on 10, 10 News at 11. All right, thank you, Shane. Meanwhile, 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder, she's also at the Berglund Center tonight, continuing our team coverage. So, Andy, you talked with a student who saw this whole scene unfold. Yeah, John and Lindsay, that's exactly right. Well, there were hundreds of students here this afternoon for graduation practice ahead of William Fleming's scheduled graduation tomorrow. Students that we spoke with say they are very shaken after knowing that one of their fellow classmates got shot. Now, we were there as dozens of parents reunited with their children after police secured the scene. Dozens of people frantically tried leaving the parking lot following the shooting. One parent and student we spoke with say they saw the victim come inside immediately after it happened. We heard, we heard three shots go off. Um, we saw somebody come in, stumble down the stairs, go over to the wall. Um, we thought he just fell down the stairs. We looked over him, he had a bullet hole in his arm, and he was yelling for somebody to call an ambulance. Now, the school division has also provided counselors on site to students who were here at the Berglund Center today. As of right now, that scheduled graduation ceremony is still set to happen tomorrow. And, of course, tonight, school leaders are sending out a message of unity to the community, asking for this violence to stop. Live in Roanoke, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. Another top story of the day is your weather. Take a live look from downtown Roanoke and our Skycam there where it just finished a major downpour. Your local weather authority is tracking these storms. So, Jeff Hanowitz, uh, where are the heaviest storms right We've got a couple of areas that we're watching, one just east of the Roanoke Valley and another one north, say, towards the southern Shenandoah. We're going to show you that all of this is indeed moving to the east, northeast, at a clip of around about 10 to 20 miles per hour. So these cells are not moving very quickly at all. First stop will take us into the areas, say, just east of the Roanoke Valley. This is the cell that brought a whole lot of rain to Roanoke. Now it's impacting areas, say, near Stewartsville, also areas up north into Fincastle, over towards Buchanan, and a cell that is uh, strengthening right along the Bedford and Campbell County line just to the uh, west of Rustburg. Uh, next up will take us a little bit further to the north and this one right over Buena Vista is really packing a punch. Thunder, lightning, also perhaps some hail in this cell, gusty winds as well. Lexington, your weather much nicer than it is in Buena Vista right now where you're dealing with a very, very strong thunderstorm. Not severe though. Then you head a little farther to the east towards Nelson County, towards Lovingston, Highway 60, Highway 29 among the folks still seeing some moderate to heavy rain. Planning your day for tomorrow, a warm start will lead us to more humidity and that 
that will lead us to more showers and thunderstorms from lunchtime on tomorrow. Just like today, any storm that forms tomorrow will likely be a gully washer. Friday, numerous showers and thunderstorms will be around, but we're going to have a pattern change just in time for the weekend as we're going to have a couple of thunder showers on both Saturday and on Sunday. But by Saturday and Sunday, we will see more sunshine and not be quite as stormy. Lindsay. A Virginia Tech football player accused of murdering a 40 year old Blacksburg man will walk free until his next court hearing this fall. E.C. Meeman Atute went before a judge today for a bond hearing. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett has shocking new details from inside the courtroom. During the hearing, prosecutors argued against Etute's release, describing what happened the night of the alleged murder. Prosecutors say Itute told police he matched with someone called Angie on Tinder on April 10th. The two met up and Angie performed a sexual act on Itute. Prosecutors then say on May 31st, the two met at Angie's apartment. And that's when Itute discovered Angie was not a woman, but the victim, 40-year-old Jerry Smith. Prosecutors say Itute told police he punched Smith in the head multiple times before Smith fell to the ground and then punched him more and stomped on his head. Despite hearing a bubbling and gurgling noise, prosecutors say Itute left the apartment and did not call 911. It's certainly a lot more than somebody walking into a, an apartment and uh, potentially uh, taking someone's life or being responsible for that. Itute's preliminary hearing is set for September 23rd. Until then, he is ordered to stay with his parents in Virginia Beach. He'll be monitored by GPS, and he cannot return to Montgomery County unless it's to meet with his attorney or for a court appearance. He's also ordered not to contact the Smith family. Reporting in Montgomery County, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you. Also breaking tonight, a mother charged with sexually abusing her toddler in Montgomery County has just been found guilty. The case is still being discussed in court right now, but we do want to warn you, some of the details we learned are disturbing and graphic. While our cameras weren't allowed inside, we were able to get photos of Kayla Thomas when she went before a jury today. Now, much of the focus has been on the different sexually explicit videos of the 27-year-old and her two-year-old son who died in 2019. The defense says she doesn't deny what happened, but that her boyfriend, Mackenzie Hellman, is to blame. Thomas says he mentally and physically abused her. Now we're working to learn more. Stay with us on air and online for updates. New at 6 tonight, a Bedford County man is facing charges after authorities believe he intentionally set a home on fire this afternoon. While putting out this Botetourt County blaze, a firefighter was hurt and taken to the hospital, but the firefighter is expected to be okay. Authorities have arrested this man, 24-year-old James Wade. They were first called to the home for a reported domestic dispute, and when they arrived, they saw Wade leaving the home with what appeared to be a gas can. He faces several charges. And your votes have picked the ballot for the November election. Tonight, we are talking to two men vying to be your next governor. This November, your vote will choose the next Virginia governor. Last night, former Governor Terry McAuliffe secured the Democratic nomination. He'll face Republican candidate Glenn Youngkin. Both are focused on helping Virginia's economy recover, but they have very different views on how to accomplish that. Number one, we've got to raise the minimum wage, $15. We've got to do it in 2024. It is critical for folks that they be able to get paid minimum wage. Paying below the poverty wages is just not what we do to lift families up. So as governor, we in fact are going to peel back mightily the red tape that's been piled on businesses, but particularly small businesses. And I would like to press forward with a tax holiday. The election is on November 2nd. And these are the two names that will be on your ballot for Lieutenant Governor Democrat Hala Ayala beat out the six other candidates last night. So she goes on to face the Republican Winsome Sears. Meanwhile, these are the two candidates that will be on the ballot for Attorney General. The incumbent Democrat Mark Herring took home 57 percent of the vote last night. He's now seeking his third term as he faces the Republican Jason Miaris. Time at Liberty University leading up to a golden moment. I don't know where I would be had I not started my my music career in Lynchburg. Her music, and if you haven't seen this, it's amazing, that caught the attention of a judge known for being tough. 
and you are looking at a live picture from our Liberty University sky cam overlooking the hill city quiet right now in Lynchburg, but just upstream to the north and also to the east. You can see some really ominous clouds. We'll let you know when this rain could impact you folks in Lynchburg coming up. She's a golden girl. Liberty University grad Jane Marcheski walked away from her America's Got Talent audition with an unforgettable golden buzzer moment. Oh, absolutely. I caught up with a 30 year old this morning and knew at six. She told me this area helped shape who she is today. Jane Marcheski lightheartedly walks onto the America's Got Talent stage with the sweetest smile and an even sweeter voice. I was a stick of dynamite and it just was a matter of time, yeah. But this woman has carried a heavy load for the past several years after a devastating breast cancer diagnosis. Wow. I have a 2% chance of survival, but 2% is not 0%. 2% is something. And I wish people knew how amazing it is. It's that perspective when facing the seemingly impossible on top of her musical talent that blew the judges away. This time, the impossible thing that I'm experiencing is an impossibly good thing. And I always believed that something like this could happen. And I think um, that's why I'm here. And so it feels like such um, it just feels like such a redemption. Marcheski is from Ohio, but got her start performing and writing while attending Liberty University. Lynchburg and, and that area of Virginia, those beautiful mountains, it's where I found myself really and where I found my voice. And um, it was such a launching pad for me and I'll be grateful for that forever. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's she sang an original song, one she told me she wrote with a message she herself needed to hear. It's okay. I'm here because of those people that, that believed when I couldn't believe, and I hope that I can be that for millions of people. Oh my gosh, and we wish, wish her all the best. Based on Morcheski's January scan, her cancer has spread. However, she plans to be on stage for the August live shows. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. More rain, more thunderstorms today. Some of these cells packing a punch with heavy rain, thunder and lightning. Also pea sized hail and gusts over 40 miles per hour. All this pushing to the east at a clip of only about 10 to 20 miles per hour. We're going to do a couple of zooms here. First stop will take us into northern Pennsylvania County. Areas right along Highway 40 and areas in and around Gretna. North into areas near Hurt and Gretna. Right along, say, um, also Alta Vista. Right along Highway 29. Right along Highway 40. If you're watching us in Rustburg, this cell is going to likely impact you folks in Rustburg here within about the next 10 minutes or so. Now I will tell you as you head farther to the north into uh, the Rockbridge, Amherst and Nelson County line right along the Blue Ridge Parkway, we've got another gully washer. A whole lot of thunder and lightning in this cell just to the east of Buena Vista. Highway 60 also seeing torrential downpours right now. This is a very hilly and mountainous road, so if you know anybody traveling it right now, it could very well be very slick, so please tell anybody you know traveling 60 going say from Buena Vista over towards Massey's Mill to please be very, very careful. Future tracker showing that as we head throughout the course of the overnight, any showers, any thunderstorms will begin to taper off here late this evening into the overnight. Then we're going to have some fog around tomorrow morning. A few showers can't be ruled out, but more numerous showers and thunderstorms will come into play as we head Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. That activity may linger a little bit longer into tomorrow night. May still have a couple of showers here as we head, say, midnight Thursday night going into Friday morning on Friday. Friday, a few showers in the morning will lead to more showers and thunderstorms covering most of the viewing area Friday afternoon into Friday evening. So Thursday and Friday again look to be very active weather days for us. And one of the reasons why is we're tracking a whole lot of humidity. It is so sticky outside. Dew points in the 60s to near 70. And as long as that humidity is lingering, the coverage of showers and thunderstorms will still linger for us, if not increase here for the next 48 hours or so. So the flood threat is 
is there for us here tonight, tomorrow and Friday. There's a slightly higher flood threat tomorrow than today. And then on Friday, there's that higher flood threat than even what we're going to be seeing on Thursday. Why? Because the ground is becoming a little more saturated at this point, but there is a change headed our way. The weekend looks to be quieter. A few thunder showers possible Saturday and Sunday, but by Monday and Tuesday, we're looking at not much rain coming with the next front and we're not looking at a whole lot of humidity coming into play either. So it does look as though by next week we're going to dry out and see more sunshine. Few thunder showers as we head into the weekend, but by Monday and Tuesday, I took out the chance for rain almost entirely. Temperatures on Friday because of the rain cool there, upper 70s and we're in the low to mid 80s on Saturday and Sunday. 74 right now with Phil in Blacksburg, also in Roanoke, a little bit warmer where it hasn't rained a little farther to the east. Overnight lows tonight, 62 to 69 with those scattered showers and thunderstorms eventually tapering off. Not as hot tomorrow with showers and thunderstorms again redeveloping in the mountains, 70s to near 80. Outside the mountains, 80 to 84. Your extended forecast showing a much more tranquil week next week. Highs will climb from the upper 70s on Friday into the upper 80s to near 90 on Monday. Only a minimal chance for a stray thunder shower on Monday and Tuesday. Happy. All right, Jeff, the first and 10 awards tour rolls on. And how about a season to talk about Auburn girls tennis? All that and more is coming. Sports is next. One of our previous head coaches was Nate Yetzer, and he started up this program uh, about eight years ago. And he had a vision of having a national championship team. Um, that crazy idea is what brought me down here. I thought I could be that guy. Um, I think now it's my turn to coach national champion, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, the 2017 Ferrum grad taking the controls of the Ferrum wrestling program after wrestling for four years under the Panthers, Nate Yetzer. Meister's been an assistant coach at McDaniel College, again at Ferrum College, before being elevated to the head position. Folks, it's no surprise when we reach the state tournament, the Auburn Eagles are still around. They are one of the most dominant Class 1 high schools in nearly all their spring sports. Girls tennis, absolutely no exce exception. They've won back-to-back -back state team titles in 2018 and 2019, including a singles and doubles championship during that time. This year, they're back in the championship round for all three team doubles and singles and the eagles are hoping to sweep all those titles it's like making history basically because i don't think that's ever happened to auburn i mean it's like one or two like we've had doubles and team go but we haven't had all three teams go so it's really exciting first off i tell them and it's the truth this is a coach's dream right here a team like this these girls are uh, they have a great attitude they're committed and they're talented and so they're, they're so easy to work with, and, uh, and I'm just thankful for the opportunity to do that. Coach Nestor saying the, his assistant coach, Paul DiViesti, has played a key role in the Eagles' success as well. Salem High hires Scott Jester. You know, may know that name, boys varsity coach at Brookville, now coaching girls basketball at Salem. Denver at Phoenix game two. The Seminoles playing for the uh, softball World Series title tonight versus Oklahoma. Hey, we want to continue to follow a breaking story for you out of Montgomery County where the jury has just recommended the mother found guilty of sexually abusing her toddler spent two life sentences plus 10 years in jail. Kayla Thomas's formal sentencing will be in September and we're continuing to follow this story and we will bring you the latest on air and on WSLS.com. Nightly News is next. We'll see you at 7.